in about 15 minutes. Louisville making its 13th straight NCAA tournament. We'll have a chance to let Coach make an opening comment. If you're joining us via Zoom, please raise your hand on the toggle for Zoom. We'll come to you for a question. Uh, until then, Coach, welcome to Baton Rouge. Congratulations. Thank if you very like much. To start with a comment, and then we'll take the floor to questions. No, just uh, just want to start off by saying th thank you. Our uh, our trip in has been good. Appreciate the NCAA and all all the hospitality that we've received so far. And looking for an opportunity to play a really good Middle Tennessee State team tomorrow. Uh, got the utmost respect for them. We played them last year at their place, and they, they kicked our tail. Uh, so we're quite aware of how talented they are. Uh, their coaching staff does a great job. Rick Insel has, has, has been around for a long time. Uh, you know, Rick goes all the way back to, uh, to Shelbyville. Uh, been doing AAU in high school, and now he's been at middle and just done a fantastic job. So we know uh, we're going to have a heck of a ball game uh, tomorrow. All right, we'll open up the floor to questions. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone because we are streaming, so we'll bring the uh, microphone to you for any questions for Coach. Coach, when you're going up against a, a big like Anastasia Boldreva that, that's got some size advantage on the inside, how do you go about you know trying to defend her when you maybe guarding her with shorter players? Well, uh, you know we we've we've done that throughout our our, our league the entire year. Uh, we're going to have to do everything we can to keep her off the uh, the low block. Uh, have to make her earn everything she gets. But she's a very talented player. She does a really nice job of facing up. Uh, she puts the ball on the floor. She'll step at it's. She's not someone that you can just not guard at the three point line. It, it she's made f 15 of them all on the year. So it's not like she's going out there and that's her first shot she's looking for, but you still ha have to respect it. Uh, she runs the floor well. She, re she rebounds outside of her area well. She's, you know, Wheeler obviously, you know, as they say, is the head, the, the, the head of the snake, but. She does a great job of cleaning everything up. You can't lose track of her in the post. So we know we've watched enough film. Our post players are aware of her from, from last year as well. Other questions for Coach? Hey, Jeff. Uh, welcome back to Louisiana. Um, Thank you. I remember the, uh, the Final Four in New Orleans when you were here. Um, Brett Martell with Associated Press. Kind of a bigger picture question that we're working on. How has the, would you say, the NIL era affected your enjoyment of the job or the difficulty of it? Or has it added a whole new layer of concerns and aggravation? Or Are you or, talking about our pay for play? Just teasing, <laughs> just teasing. Hey, all right, everybody yeah. laughs some. Okay, uh, good, because oh hell, that's a bad word. Yeah, uh, and, and we're no, asking the question. In, yeah, reality. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, we're asking in the part. context of you know some of the things that like Nick Saban recently said about why he retired and so forth. Well, I, I mean, I yeah, you know, I saw what what you know, Coach Saban had said also. Um, no, I, I mean, it's it's here. It's what it is. So you can either. Be upset about it or embrace it and you know the the challenging part of it is the balances of what are you able to get what each school what's the collective able to raise you know I'd love a salary cap somehow you know so then you're playing more on a uh, even field it's you go to Major League Baseball and at least they've got an ex they they have a, a tax you know your luxury tax. So if you're over a certain amount in your NIL, well, then maybe somehow you're taxed. But if you're only able to raise a certain amount and you're way under what everyone else is able to raise, well, it, is, is it going to turn into the, the ones that have against the ones that don't have? I, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's a great concept, and I've said it all along. I, I think it's wonderful. I don't think it's reality in some ways. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think any every NFL player has an endorsement deal. You know, a lot of them do, but I'm, I'm not sure everyone does. But on your team, we're trying to do everything our, we can. Our collective is working extremely hard. I'm not. 
our collective is, to make sure we phrase that correctly. <laughs> okay, But they're working extremely hard to make sure our players, they, they are all able to earn something, not get earned. Okay, And it's, it, it's a lot of work. There's no question about it. But you have to be creative. You have to try to figure out ways. Uh, has it added a new uh, d d d dimension to things? Of course it has. Um, is it something I enjoy? I mean, it's, 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 it's a new challenge. So I do enjoy that. But, you know, at the end of the day, when I'd say 50 or 60%, if not higher, when you're recruiting, one of the first five questions is, what is, what is your NIL ca 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 uh, capabilities? You know, it's, it's like, okay, here's, here, here's what I think we can do. Here's what the, 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 the collective can do. So I, I think it's going to be interesting here in the next few years how it all takes shape. Like, I, I don't, you can't rein it back in. I don't think it's something where they're going to say, hey, we're not going to do this anymore. But it is going to be interesting to see, for me to see where it goes. And uh, at this point, point in time, like I said, you just have to embrace it and try to make the best of it. Obviously, you have players here like Owen Rist that have been through the Elite Eights and the Final Fours. How do you balance some of the players like, you know, Jada that plays, and, you know, Kiki that plays a big role in what you are trying to do to, you know, enjoy the experience of the tournament, but also, you know, you have a job to do? Well, we always try to tr try make sure it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's our, thir our, our 13th straight NCAA opportunity, our tournament, and we want to make sure each year that the kids enjoy it. Like, you want to make sure it's a special event, you know, and you want to make sure that you, you don't just come down. You know, we came down last night. Normally, if it's a normal road game, you come down, you eat at the hotel, you spend the night, you wake up the next morning, go to shoot around, play the game, and, and go home. Well, we wanted to make sure we came down and we, we took them out to eat. One wanted, wanted to make sure they had an op opportunity to, to eat some local food, you know, and see some things. So it's important to me to make sure they enjoy the experience. So we put in time for that, but then we also know it's a business trip and we know what's at stake. So you, you have to manage to be able to do both. Chester Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. You coached Haley Van Lett for three seasons. Mm -hmm. What do you see from Haley in the postseason and also what have you seen maybe growth over the past year if you have kept I, up with I really, her? I mean, you know, she played ex extremely well for us. You know, I, I, I thought we did a great job of putting her in positions to succeed. Uh, you know, she was a first-team all-league player for us, uh, honorable mention, all-American. I mean, you know, she had a great three years, and she graduated. You know, and that at the end of the day, that's what us coaches are here to do is to try to make sure you give a great basketball experience and then you make sure your players graduate from college. So we did that. And it's not like I've sat down and watched film. I mean, we're sitting here, we, we have our own team I'm, I'm worrying about and we have a great opportunity here, here tomorrow. Um, and if we're fortunate enough to move forward, then we'll see who we play on, on, on Sunday. Hi, Scott Rabelais from the Baton Rouge Advocate. I have to ask you where you went, went, to, went to eat. We always want to know where you go to eat. You know I'm what, for that time. Amy? Where did we go eat last night? Uh, some place that had a big patio in the back. They had board games. And okay. Bar B B B uh, God. B B Q. Th thank you. Oh, you went to B B Q. Yes, oh, it was very nice. Yes. Yeah. We're we're obsessed with food here. We have to act. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the players love the beer. God, great beer. <laughs> great beer. We, we stuck with the beer shots. We stopped them at. <laughs> Just tease it again. I got you. I got you. Not the first time. That's the first time I've seen you at a press conference. So All right. I, I good. Sure. Um, I, I, you, you knew you'd get some Haley questions. Uh, will you? Will you make a point to to speak to her? Will you let that happen organically? Will you try to stay away? Listen. What, I, what do you want? That's to, called tampering. You... That's tampering. The NCA. As they were. Am I incorrect? If I go speak with a player from another team, they would consider that tampering him and with the fines that I've incurred so far this season I don't think I need it <laughs> anymore uh, so I will 
stay away from any, anything that will cost my kids any more enjoyment of a vacation. Yeah. Because we're going to the state park th th this year instead of down to the islands or something because of the 20000 I paid already. We're camping. Going back to Middle Tennessee, you, you mentioned Savannah Wheelers, the, the head of the snake for them offensively. What's the most threatening part of her game? Is it getting to the free throw line? God, it's everything. I mean, she is special to watch. Uh, just so impressed with the pace she plays at. Uh, her ability to get to the basket, her ability to get to the, the free throw line. Uh, she never stops uh, uh, moving, and she plays with an attitude. I mean, I love the way she plays. You know, you can't, as soon as you relax, she's changing pace and, and going by you. So we, we've watched enough and it played her and faced her, you know, la last year to, to, to know what she's, what, what she's capable of doing. We have time for one more if there's one more for Coach. Didn't know about the fines previous. That's a bold move, talking about the beer and everything. Oh, those fines already. Well, that, the fines were a little <laughs> comment about some the three other people on the floor that I might not have agreed with. <laughs> gotcha. You know, the scorer, the scorekeeper. <laughs> sure. I mean, those three at the table were bad. <laughs> sure. I appreciate you. Coach, we Thank appreciate you your time. We have a five-minute break. We'll have some players in here. A reminder for those that are here uh, in person, Louisville's practice starts at 1130. First 15 minutes will be open to the media. After the players for Louisville, our next press conference will be at 1225 uh, with LSU. We'll be back in about five or six minutes. So don't Thank think it's a leftover. <laughs> Welcome back to Baton Rouge. Time now to talk to two of the players from Louisville. We're joined by senior Marissa Russell and to my immediate left, senior Olivia Cochran, by the way, named all ACC second team. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate and welcome, you. welcome to Baton Rouge for both of you. Uh, for those that are here, uh, if you have a question, please address your question to one of the players. Also introduce yourself and your affiliation since the players are new to Baton Rouge. So if you will please do that uh, and we'll direct your question to that. If you're joining us via Zoom, if you'll please hit the raise your hand toggle, we'll come to you. And with that, let's open up the floor to questions for either Olivia or Marissa. Olivia, Sam Downton, GoBlueRaiders.com. Uh, you've gone up against a lot of bigger posts in ACC play, and, and you're going up against another very good one tomorrow. What's the strategy on, on dealing with a post player where, where you're at probably a height disadvantage some of the time? Um, I think um, the scout report is on her. It's like my quickness. Um, make sure we front end, and we're going to try to double um, her. Um, just get her out of the game, push her off the block more, make her shoot more jumpers than layups. So that's really our game plan tomorrow. Marissa, um, you obviously played Middle Tennessee last year in the Murphy Center. I'm sure we both, you and Olivia, you know, have memories of that game. You know, how much do, does that, you know, play into what y'all are doing preparation-wise this week? Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, they they beat our behinds last year in um, Tennessee. Um, it's left a sour taste in our mouth, and we watched that game back. Um, a over the past couple of days, and um, it's effort, right? They, they had more effort than us last year, and we can't have that happen again, and it's happened in some games this year as well, and Coach Balls has definitely told us about it. So uh, we got to come out with a lot of effort, and they're a great team. Like I said, they beat us last year. Um, we have a completely different team this year, and they have a, a newer team as well. So um, it's going to be a battle of effort, and it's, it's March. Anything can happen, but um, our coaches have a great scouting report, and we're really excited to have that rematch again. Anybody right now? I'll ask you all a couple questions. We'll talk. You're nice enough to join us. Don't want you to have to leave, leave right away. Um, Olivia, let me start with you first because it's your fourth year. Yes, so sir. So certainly a lot of experience. How does that experience help you? You all have had a lot of success in your time starting the NCAA tournament, but fourth year here. You have a lot of experience in your lineup. How does that help you all prepare for the start of the season? 
definitely since we're an older team um, and people came from different schools, it just give us like a different look on like what can bring who what who can bring to the table and um, you know it's like how we match up with people um, and it's been great dealing with you know new people from new people. I can't even talk, new people from new teams, um, just seeing like how we can all be joined as one and you know, different personalities mixing together. And it's been awesome. I mean, on, on the court and off the court, I, I can't complain at all. And I feel like the experience they bring in from their other schools is, is helping me grow as a um, leader and as a player as well, because some things I never knew, you know? So getting that knowledge from them is helping me grow as well as a player. Marissa, obviously with LSU being here, a lot of the focus has been eight SEC teams, but it shouldn't be overlooked. There are eight ACC teams as well. So how do you think going through that gauntlet for you all has helped you prepare to start the new season here with the tournament? Yeah, for sure. I think our, our conference is probably one of the best in the country, if not the best. You have, you have no idea where you're going to get every game in and out. We have to prepare for every game in the ACC conference. Um, we've lost a couple of tough ones in our conference as well to Virginia, Syracuse, who came out really strong this year. Um, we've, we're really battle-tested because of our conference and our conference play, so I'm just really excited. Um, like I said, we have a great team tomorrow to play, so it's, it's really tested us, and we, we feel prepared. Uh, you commented on Middle Tennessee, so Olivia, let me ask you. You're facing a team. Everybody likes to look at brackets and seedings. They see a six, they see an 11. What they may not look at is you're facing a team that hasn't lost yet in calendar year 2024. So as you have scouted them, what have you seen about this year's Middle Tennessee team that you'll face tomorrow? Um, like Marissa said earlier, um, they're an effort team. Um, they they whooped our butts last year, um, mentally, physically, <laughs> emotionally. So um, this year we just, like like we said, we just gotta know, know, know us. We gotta be Louisville and um, we haven't been playing with effort like we should have in a couple games that we lost this year. So, and the game last year that we lost against them, we didn't have no effort. So, um, we got to go in with a fight. Um, we got to go in with a chip on our shoulder and, you know, show them that we are tough and that we're, we're willing to work hard and stuff like that. So, yeah. Any other questions? Scott? Obviously, every, uh, Scott Rappelay with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Obviously, everyone wants to play at, at home in the first two rounds, but when you, you saw you're getting sent here and you're playing on the home court of the reigning national champions. Was that kind of interesting in a way? You know, obviously you're not playing them in the first round, but just to be here where they played, you see the you know the banners and everything. Uh, what, what, what was that reaction like? For sure. Um, last year we we went to Texas as well. We we didn't get to host. Um, like I mentioned before, we're four year players, so we've had an opportunity to host um, our first two years or our first our second year because mm -hmm. it was a COVID tournament. But um, it's it's amazing. We we are very prepared. Like we mentioned before, we're a very battle tested team. We have great transfers that have played in multiple tournaments. Um, it's really cool to play um, against the defending national champions. Um, if we win against <laughs> Middle Tennessee and being on their court, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome for women's basketball. It's awesome to get. That exposure. I'm Canadian, so I don't really, I don't really know America all that much. So it's it's great to travel the country and just see. We went and had some like jambalaya last night. I've always, I've only ever seen that in the movies, so that was amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to try that in um, some craw crawfish etouffee. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but too. it was awesome. So uh, just to try new things in the culture as well, and just um, travel and, and and support the women's game. It's it's amazing. But I'm excited to get playing for sure. You, you mentioned the COVID tournament. It seems like since the pandemic, women's basketball has just taken off in terms of you know, TV ratings and popularity and ticket sales and all that stuff. It's got to be an exciting time to be part of the game. What, what do you think it is? What, what, what do you all think is the reason for, for this rapid growth that we've seen in the last you know, two or three years? For sure. I think that it's just social media help um, in more coverage of the sport. Uh, we have great faces of the game, and Caitlin Clark, even Angel Reese, since we're here at LSU, um, it's great for women's basketball. We have great names, great faces for the, and we and we have the skill. Um, I think we've had the skill forever. We've had great teams at U of L, um, in Maisha Hines, Allen, Angel McCautry. Like we deserve that coverage, and we've shown that. Um, just great now that we just have that social media platform. Um, like I said, more coverage of the game, so it's just exciting. And I remember when I was younger, I was like, I want to be the next Brianna Stewart because I was able to watch. Mm -hmm. So now there's so many more like even in Canada we're, cover, we're covering more of our games um, so that young Canadian girls and young Canadian boys can watch us play as well so it's pretty cool. Yeah. She, she talked, I don't even have nothing to say. She, she <laughs> said everything, she said the right thing. <laughs> I don't have nothing to say. That was Anybody good. else for the girls what we got for the ladies? Brett? Well, no, we got go, ahead. go ahead. And then Brett. Chesson Boucher with WVLA here in Baton Rouge. 
Haley, you played with Haley for I was three seasons. You, you knew you what was coming. I'm, <laughs> I figured I'd ease into it. Um, but have you spoken to her? And you know, when you hear that y'all go to LSU's bracket, I'm, I'm sure you saw on social media her reaction for you facing a former teammate. What is it going to be like if you do end up facing her on Sunday? Yeah, for sure. I actually haven't spoken to her since we landed here. Um, like I've told the team, it's it's a it's a business trip, right? We're really excited. Um, obviously, we're excited to play them. We didn't get to choose the bracket that we play in, but um, we're, we're here to play. Obviously, we have a great game tomorrow against Middle Tennessee, and, and we'll play our best and hopefully get the winner of the um, LSU game. Um, we're excited. You know, this is I'm, I'm really excited this year. We have a really great team this year, probably my, one of my favorites, if not the best team. Great people, great teammates. Um, we've had some highs and lows this season, but we've always had each other's backs, and that's something that we, ha we didn't have last year in that team. Um, so I'm excited. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a little bit interesting playing an old teammate. Obviously, we're a little bit closer to her. We, we were in her same class, but um, I have so much faith in this team, and, and we're a better team than we were last year, so I'm, I'm really excited. Um, we have new leadership in me. Oh, um, so yeah, it's, we look good. Definitely. I'm definitely excited. Um, just like the former question about playing the defending national champions, like that's, that's, like that's a goal on my list. You know, um, I'm super excited. I, I have total confidence in my teammates um, that we're going to take care of business tomorrow. And um, hopefully, you know, we can go to Sunday and, you know, play. I mean, never had no hate love relationship with Haley. Um, love her to death. Wish her the best. I'm glad she's, you know, having success with her new team and we're having success. Like, you know, this is basketball. It's about, you know, moving on and, you know, bettering yourself. So um, happy she's doing that. We're going to do the same for ourselves. So, yeah. And yes, we did see the the post on social media, her reaction, yes, yeah. <laughs> to answer your question. Yeah, we did. We did see it. And you know, we're we going to see what's going to happen. So. We're excited. We're excited for this tournament. We're excited to be in this bracket, for sure. For sure. Um, just related, I was, I was wondering when, when you have a several year relationship with a prominent teammate and, and then they leave, I mean, a lot of those are lifetime relationships anyway. Has there been much um, contact since she left? Or will this be kind of like the first time you've talked to her in a long time or what? No, I mean, I was her roommate for three years, so I, I talk to her almost every week. Um, it's different. Obviously, we're on two different teams, and we're very busy. It's college basketball. I, I don't even talk to my mom that much sometimes. So um, it, we, we still talk. We're still friends. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's a business trip. And if we do win this game, hopefully we want to win this game against Middle Tennessee, we get to play them. Um, we're excited. We're excited for the matchup. Like you said, it's a lifelong relationship. I consider her a really great friend of mine, just as much as I consider an Emily Angsler or Dana Evans is a, a friend of mine and, and a, a dear sister. So. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited for how this is going to turn out and how we're going to play tomorrow. But like I said, tomorrow is a great game. We're playing a great team. Um, like you said before, it's a 6-11 matchup, but these these rankings, these numbers go out the door um, when it's March, so you have to pay attention to those games right in front of you and kind of put that storyline behind us and just and focus on winning the first game. For sure. Go ahead. We got time. Totally unrelated. Uh, by the way, it's Brett Martel with Associated Press. I forgot to identify myself. Sorry. A um, little bit of uh, off the wall question here, but so before every game, everyone watching the stadium on TV, they see you get introduced and you get to the end of the line and there's number 23 and you do, a, you have a little routine with Alexia. Yes. Um, how, how does someone, what are the qualifications for that role that she has? And like, and, and you know, is it just a fun, goofy thing that you do or is it, or is there actually like an element to it that you take seriously about it, that it kind of puts you in a, game mode or whatever no actually that's a, that's a great question it's funny because uh, i was that role for for three years um and then lex took over i think it's just kind of the person who wants to do it it's a it's part of the culture of basketball i don't think i've ever watched a game where there was no handshakes. um handshakes or anything like that um just the culture but you get to have it personalized with your teammate and i know that means a really big deal to lex as well just kind of being a part of the game and, and kind of sending you off to, to i would say war battle whatever um but it just kind of get you a little lighthearted in, into going to the game i know olivia is, is pretty yeah. simple i did hers for three years so yeah i'm i'm very superstitious so like i just try to keep stuff simple um i'll be already in the mode to play so like them just that's just for them that's for me to get out my um you know comfort zone and stuff like that so i just do it because they want me to um <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I have fun with them they make me laugh um they give me joy before the game so i'd be excited already so the handshake just the plus for sure Last question here, and then they go to go right for practice. 
both y'all being veterans last year, coming up short to the final four, how do you use that experience from last year as you get ready to make this tournament run? For Def sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, definitely um, just keeping one foot in front of the other. Um, like I've been telling some of my teammates, because some of them, it's their first tournament. So, um, like, I'm off of social media right now because I can't, like, picture like everybody talking about the drama and stuff like that and that's what I you know tried to tell some of them like we don't need to focus on that we just need to focus on getting ourselves better and you know um, helping each other grow and stuff like that so um, yeah I mean it's fun um, I told them like when we went to the final four it was fun like you get more stuff everywhere you every like advance you go like you get more and more stuff so the more we get the farther we get the more we get so I was telling them y'all just gotta keep one foot in front of the other and stay humble and trust each other and play for each other and tr trust the coaching staff because they have our backs as well and they want us to succeed because they can't go out there and play for us so play for each other and have fun mm -hmm. to piggyback off of that just having a great coach a great coaching yeah. staff a, a veteran coaching staff as well and coach walls um he knows exactly what he's doing it's it's not a if he's right or i don't know if he, it's he's right and just doing what he says and like olivia said taking it one step at a time every game is important yeah. um it's you lose, you lose, you win, or you or you go home, right? So um, you can't come and overlook a team ever at, at, at any stage. Um, and like I said, the rankings are the rankings just for the matchup. But it, we played a Drake team last year, a five twelve game, and they were not a twelve seed, and, right. and they almost <laughs> sent us home in the first round. So um, you have to show up at every game, and that's basically our advice that we tell our teammates. It's funny because we're in the locker room and we realize that Jada Curry's never been to the tournament before. Just seeing her and reaction, she, and she's like like in awe of everything, and we're like, oh my goodness, she hasn't been here before. And yeah. there's me and Otis here like let's let's start practice <laughs> right, and we're ready to, to like, go you know, let's have, let her have her moment of just like this i've made this you know and i mean and, and she's a great player and we have great players like um kiki jefferson and, and sydney taylor who, who have had their bouts of tournament um it's just cool that we're all together now we're taking in that moment and, and we get to appreciate what we've gone through these past four years because it's kind of a given that louisville women's basketball is going to get make it to the tournament it's just kind of how far they get and these girls are just kind of so appreciative that we made it to the first round so it's right. like okay we got we got here now let's like let's lock in here and, and <laughs> yeah. let's keep going you know what i mean dancing, but on, yeah just just focused. explain to our teammates obviously there's a lot of stuff going on in social media um that we don't need to be uh paying Focus attention on, to yeah. so we're really focused on what we're our, what our goal is here and like i said it's a business trip Sure. Marissa and Olivia, it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you much. So much. Thank you, you all have practice in 10 minutes. We wish you good luck in your game. Once again, Louisville's practice will start at 1130. First 15 minutes are open to the media that are here in Baton Rouge. We will next be back here at 1225 with players from LSU. That will be followed at 1245 with head coach uh, Kim Mulkey. Until then, have a good afternoon. We'll see you back here in Baton Rouge at 1225.